Hi, my name is Delaney Neville and I'm going to be presenting a final presentation on Oedipus Rex. So the project that I did is an art piece. It's a digital art piece. I also printed it out for you. And it'll be attached in my um, discussion post. But what I wrote about was Oedipus Rex and sight versus blindness as a motif. Um, essentially throughout so Sophocles' play, Oedipus, Oedipus Rex, the motif of sight and blindness is tackled for both literal and metaphorical meanings. Um, there's ironic symbolism thrown in there and they use that to describe um, the true meaning of sight versus the literal meaning we understand today. Uh, he creates a narrative within the play that depicts blind as insightful and true to wisdom, while those who can see remained metaphorically blind to the truth of the world. Um, so first I want to talk a little bit about my piece and then I will get into the meanings um, of the motif. So first off, my drawing, I'm going to show it to you while I talk, is this. Um, the piece itself represents that sight versus blindness, but also how it can be detrimental to ignore the truth. I show my depiction of the oracle in the center. I show Oedipus as he's going through fi finding the truth. And then once he's gouged his eyes out, you can see different details in the three characters. These are the same at different time periods and how they carry themselves and the different demeanors that they have. Um, so essentially I chose the oracle um, and then also Apollo up here to show the connection to light of the world and the truth that Apollo brings. While Oedipus on the bottoms is shown more as in pain um, and frustrated and he's blind to the truth um, of the world. He's lost his, and then once he's lost his sight, he knows what's actually happening and he's holding his head a little higher. Um, even though everything he went through was traumatic, he feels more awake and praise for what is going on. Um, I chose this theme to bring light onto how pride acts against godly powers and that you are never above the godly set of the world. That was kind of the story where like Apollo put this prophecy set in stone and you try and change it and you can't. Um, I think that the interpretation of the play affected my visual depiction just because the way that I see energy is this entity around us and I tried to depict that in the light and how everything is reflecting off of this oracle that's connected to the gods and how it's carried and I drew um, where they would be at the top of the mountain. Um, I chose to do digital work because it's actually one of my best mediums and I wanted to properly depict really what I was showing, you know, like I wanted to get the best representation of that magical energy and those powers and the different abilities and digital gives me the opportunity to do that. So to get into the motif, what I want to talk about is kind of how that motif of sight versus blindness tracks through the um, play. So first you need to analyze the word blind. How are they using it? Usually blind is going to be talked as something that's ignorant, right? So someone is blind to the truth. They're ignorant to the truth. But the way that Sophocles uses it, he makes the, a character visually blind and that person knows, that person is awakened. Right? So it's actually the opposite. And those who can see um, don't understand what's going on. And I think the reason he did that is that those who are blind have to learn a new way to look at the world. They have to go about it differently in order to succeed. Um, one of the examples is that the blind prophet, they say, sees everything. With, uh, he sees everything those with sight cannot. Um, and that was in the first introduction of the blind prophet. They were saying that he he's omnipotent essentially he's he's all knowing of the universe going on um one example of the way that Sophocles uses buzzwords um to introduce sight versus blindness is one of the first characters with Thuri um Thurisius? Thurisius? um essentially he starts by using these little words sight see understand blind um but then the first real depiction of the motif is when um Thurilius shows up and he says blind lost in the night endless night that nursed you 
or sorry, that cursed you. You can't hurt me or anyone else who sees the light. You can never touch me. And it's essentially showing how he feels he's so much above these people that um, can't see. He, he feels like he knows everything because he can see. And anyone that can see that light is better than the people that cannot. Better than the people in what he's calling the darkness. Um, I think that there's a lot to unpack there. It's a big concept of um, power and class and just all all over it's ableism um one of the things that i got from some of the articles that i was reading some of the peer review articles and journal articles was um in turning a blind eye by john stinner he says it's suggested that turning a blind eye that phrase ignoring something right um is an important mechanism which leads to a misrepresentation in distortion of psychic reality so essentially, these characters push away things that they feel could be true, push away things that are bad, things that are ugly, in order to ignore those facts and change their current reality. He wants to see what his truth is. He doesn't want to know the actual way the world is, so he pushes it away. He turns a blind eye, blind eye to reality. Um, a good example of that is the quote, smote the nerves of his own eyeballs, saying they should see no more evils, darkling, let them gaze on forms they might not see and fail to recognize the faces they desired. So what that's saying is he's saying smote the nerves of his own eyeballs, right? So I don't want to see like, like the nerve of that person is kind of what I got from that, right? So the nerve of my own eyes, why would I gaze upon something so horrific? Why would I look at something like this? Um, and that just kind of shows how they're pushing away that negative energy. They're pushing away anything they don't deem good enough. Anything they deem, um, oh gosh, sorry. Whatever, anything that they deem is um, negative or wrong or something they don't want to know, right? They make their own truth in their head and push that away. Uh, so essentially they're lacking the willingness to see, which is a way that Oedipus is commonly perceived, right? Is that these truths are put right in front of him one after another, and he lacks the willingness to actually push forward and see those truths. Um, a good example of this, of the, the people that get in his way and people that make him feel justified in ignoring the truths of his life um, is Jocasta and how she reacted to everything, right? So. She's one of the many, many characters who's incredibly metaphorically blind because she feels she's aware of the prophecy. She gathered this prophecy and she feels like she's above it. She's above the gods. She's above this. She she thinks she cheated fate and she won, right? But the entire concept of the play is that these gods are all powerful. These gods are above you and they know what they know. And this prophet works directly under them and it's just... Jocasta is not comprehending that you cannot get away from your fate, which is honestly one of my favorite parts about this story it's, uh, or about this play. It's why I like it so much is that you can really comprehend like fate is set in stone where you're going to be. That's where you're going to go no matter what. Um, and honestly, Jocasta pushes for Oedipus to leave it alone. She's like, no, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, thinking that if he ignores the truth that's starting to be uncovered, he won't have to face it. Um, a lot of this creates dramatic irony because Oedipus is essentially making these declarations against himself, right? And Jocasta is making these declarations against fate, even though all of it is very clearly falling directly into place, right? So one of my favorite dramatic irony moments of the play that shows just how blind or ignorant um, they are to the truth is when Oedipus makes a declaration against himself right he says now i curse the murderer whoever is the lone man unknown in his crime or one among many let that man drag out his life in agony step by painful step and he's talking about himself because he's talking about the person who killed the king which is him um and you just see so much blindness and ignorance in that because he's making this public declaration of hate this public declaration of pain against himself um, essentially, in conclusion, the motif of the play primarily integrates sight versus blindness to present a depiction of awareness and oblivion, right? So you have awareness and oblivion, you have knowledge and ignorance. Um, and they show this through physical blindness, they show this through 
putting knowledgeable characters in those unseeable shoes. You see it through um, the blinding ignorance of a character and how a character goes blind once he knows the truth. When Oedipus gouges his eyes out, he becomes one of the blind, but at this point he's aware of the world and he no longer thinks that he's destined against fate. Um, Oedipus removes his sight with the aspiration of ridding himself of the horrific actions. Sight versus blindness essentially provides a reader with physical representation of ignorance, knowledge, and awareness. Um, I really do enjoy this play and I felt really connected to it in the sense of I love the concept of energy surrounding us. I love the concept of an, undesire, an undeniable fate that you're destined to be in all the time. Um, and let me just show you my piece one more time and I'll attach it below if you want to look at it. You can zoom in, see some of the extra details and stuff. And this is what we got going on. Thank you so much.